Well, I told you we'd get around to framing this boat, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Not only are we going to frame it, we're going to frame it with plastic, which is probably a little weird to a lot of people. And it's a little strange to me, too, but I've gotten used to it because I've framed so many boats with plastic now, it's almost countless. Uh, we framed some very huge yachts with the same stuff, uh, two by two. We framed a 60-foot Trumpy Power yacht with it, and a friend of mine just recently framed a 48-foot schooner. So uh, it's got the confidence of an awful lot of people, and it certainly has my confidence. I purchased this stuff right here locally from Lead Plastics, and they're pretty nice people because uh, the stuff comes in a one-inch sheet, or at least the stuff that I bought right here came in a one-inch sheet, and they sized it to five-eighths of an inch for me, so I received it from them. It would be five-eighths of an inch thick by an inch wide. Now, I thought an inch wide, the thickness of the sheet, was a little bit too wide for me, so what I did was I pushed it through a little bench planer, and I've sized it down to seven-eighths of an inch, and uh, I've sized it a few times until I get it exactly right because I want it within thousandths so that it fits in those slots almost perfectly well. So and that's exactly what I've got now. This stuff is amazing. I love this stuff. Look at this. You can bend this stuff. You can do all kinds of things to it. And, you know, I guess strength is kind of the way you might perceive it. Look, it bends real easy, but I wouldn't call that weak because you can't break it, you know. It, uh, it twists, it does all kinds of things that wood would have a hard time doing, and yet it holds fastenings, you can screw into it, you can rivet it, you can just do all kinds of different things with it. It's exactly what I'm looking for to frame a boat like this. You know, I think that uh, wood framing or bent wood framing in a boat like this is probably one of the first things that would let you down. Never mind that, you know, our garbage seam is something that we wanted to make sure that we did really differently and strong, so that would never let you down. Now we're out to put frames in it that will never let you down, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do, actually, is tape off these slots in the plywood right here because, you know, there's a very distinct possibility that I could get a little bit of glue seeped down in there when I'm gluing the garbage planks off to the bottom or when I'm gluing the bottom down, the second layer of bottom onto the first first layer or whatever. I don't want to glue the two pieces of wood together, my false bottom and my bottom or any of that. It all has to stay separate. Now I'm going to get started taping out the frame slots in the false bottom here and I'm just using packaging tape. Now I take a nice piece like that and what I do with it is I hold it dead center on each end and I pull it very nice and tight longitudinally and set it down in the bottom of that slot on the bottom. Now I want to make sure it's contacting the very bottom and that's not even good enough for me. Let me try that again. Like that. Now I'll force that down against the bottom with my finger. Then I'm going to pick up a little piece of wood and I'm going to use that very corner of a wedge to push it into that corner real nice and tight like that. Now, now that it's tight in those two surfaces, I'm able to pick up a razor knife. Now I'm going to cut this corner like so. And I'm also going to cut this corner like so. And then lay those down nice and tight. Then I'm going to make another cut in the bottom corner right here and fold that centerpiece over towards the middle of the boat. And then the next piece, I'm going to fold up until it contacts the piece on the top. And uh, I'll squeeze that up nice and tight and make sure it's nice and neat. I'll contact the two pieces and cut that off maybe a quarter inch long. I'm going to take another piece of tape and do the second side of this slot. Now, the second side is just like taping the first side, although it might be a little bit more tricky, especially placing the tape, because you're trying to get one edge of the tape near that corner at least. But what you really have to do is get it nice and flat in the bottom because if you contacted the tape in the bottom and it was wrinkled, you wouldn't be able to move it around. So the placement is very tricky on the second side, but from there on, it's the same exact thing. You have to kind of squeeze it over there into the corner with your thumbnail or a piece of wood or something. Once you've got it pressed in place, you make the same cuts you did on the first side and fold the pieces over the same way. The only thing left to do after that to complete this whole area right here is, is I've got to put two pieces of tape at the very top where I made that first cut on each side because it's a kind of an open gap right there and it's vulnerable to having some leakage right there and I don't want that to happen so I put two little pieces of tape down to cover that and that takes care of it. 
I'm not trying to build up a bunch of layers here. I do have to overlap the tape so that it becomes all one when it's done here, but I don't care to have two or three layers of tape, and I certainly don't want to have any wrinkles or a mess or anything like that because it would take up space and probably cause me some sort of trouble. So I'm just going about it as neatly as possible, and uh, it seems to play right into going as fast as possible. The whole procedure thing is the key to it all. That's the way I see it. Now I've got some of the slots amidships here taped off and I just want to show you how the frames fit in the slot with the tape in there. I've tapered the edge of the frame just a tiny bit with a block plane because the edges are so keen it's hard to get them started. But once you get them started, they push right down in there as tight as that. Now, that's exactly what I've been looking for and this isn't going to cause us any problem at all. But as you move forward, the boat gets more of a bevel in it. It starts to roll. The frames are rolled this way. And as you move forward, they're rolled even more. Well, that doesn't even cause us a problem in assembly. But what could cause us a problem is, is once you get them in there and the whole boat is built, in order to pull the thing off the jig, these frames aren't going to want to come up straight up because of this bevel. So what I'm going to have to do is open the slot up in the false bottom a little bit. Now I'm not going to open the slot up in the bottom itself because I want it to fit tight in the bottom. But in the false bottom, I'm going to saw that slot open a little bit wider. You can see clearly now how much more room I've got in that slot for the frame. You know, I've gone up the after side of the slot with the handsaw and I've created quite a bit of room. The frame wiggles around in there now. Up in these forward ones, or the center ones here, the uh, frame doesn't wiggle at all. It's nice and tight. It's that tight in the very bottom, all of them, and it's going to remain that tight. I'm only opening up the false bottom. Now, like I had said before, I did it with a handsaw alongside a piece of wood and up forward here I did the after side of the slots because as I lift the boat off of the jig it's going to want to bind up on the after side of the frame like that as it starts to pop out. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of grace and it's going to make it easier to remove. Up forward here I even made a little bit more. I sawed that one out a little tiny bit wider and the very forward one I made even a little bit wider than that because I just don't want to have any trouble with it. So I'm sawing the after sections or the after side of the frame slots up forward and back aft I'm going to saw the forward side of the frame slots. Once that's completed, I'm going to tape them off just like I did the others. And then I'm going to go around and tape off in between the slots because I'm going to have tape everywhere. I'm going to put a row of tape above the corner slots there and I'm going to make sure that there's no bare wood anywhere because I don't want there to be a slightest chance of gluing things together that aren't supposed to be. I've come around back aft here to see if I've covered every little bit of plywood that's showing and I can see that right in these corners I left a couple little pieces out. Now I've checked every other one out and I've done pretty well but right here I left a few pieces out so I'm going to cover it right now. The last couple little pieces to make sure that when I glue the framing in and uh, the bottom down and all those things that I don't get any glue migrating down in that corner there and gluing everything together. So I'm just going to cover that. Both corners just like that. That's all we need. Now you can also see that I've removed the transom and I taped off between the transom and the false bottom so when I do any gluing in this area I won't get anything glued to that false bottom and not be able to remove it when I'm done. So we're all done there and it's looking pretty good. We're ready to put the bottom on. Now we're going to put it right back up on there and tack it right down in the same two holes it was tacked into before when we cut the slot and uh, it's in exactly the same position. Now that we've got our first layer of bottom planking up on top of the false bottom, on top of our molds here, I just wanted to show you really quickly about this tape and what we were doing here with the tape. You know, we have to end up gluing the garbage plank onto this first layer of bottom. The frames will be in place when we're doing it, and I have to seal up these cuts for the frames here. Uh, I just don't want to get any glue in between this piece 
and the false bottom because if I did and glued it together it would just be a tragedy you know I wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be good at all so I've been very very careful to get that taped off properly and I'd say that it's like really really an important step right here so I've taken my time I've got it taken care of the next thing for me to do really here is is to uh, start framing the boat so I'm going to grab a piece of my plastic right here and I'm going to set it down in front of me and uh like I said about this plastic, these edges on the plastic right here, the four corners are so keen, it's unbelievable. You could cut yourself on those, that's how sharp they are. So the inboard edges, I'm going to just knock that corner off with a block plane real quick, like real easy and not much of it. Just enough to get that keenness off of there so you can say that you wouldn't cut yourself on it. And like I say, I'm only interested in doing two corners of it, the two corners that would be inboard on the boat and once that's done I can take the piece and plug it right in place like so and then I'm going to put a wedge alongside of it right here in the false bottom and tap it right in there nice and tight with a hammer and then what I'm going to do is pick up a piece of ferrin strip and put it beneath it like so just to support it so it doesn't sag and then I'm going to take a couple of six penny nails and just tack that in place. And I'm not driving them in there very deep, just enough to hold it up here. And one here. Oh, that's an eight penny. Wait a minute, let's try a six. Hand saw is the right tool for this job. It's just like that cut I did on the transom. You know, when you saw against the surface like this, you get a little bit of sawdust built up between the saw and the surface. And when you cut it off, when you complete, you find out that what you've cut off is a little bit proud, and that's exactly what you want. Because you don't want to cut down into the surface with your hand saw. And it doesn't matter, because you can just pick up a little block plane and knock that right down. Two or three swipes and you're all set. The last thing that I'm going to do is mock the end of it with a magic marker, two starboard, so that when I remove it, I can put it back in the proper slot. So that's one down. Now I'm just going to move on to the rest of them on the starboard side. And one thing that's nice here is they fit so snugly in the slots that once I push them down in there, which takes a little bit of effort actually, they don't move around. So when I'm sawing them off, I don't have to clamp them in place or fasten them in place or anything. It's just a nice snug fit. Now I've got two of the frames here from the starboard side and I just wanted to place them down here and point out to you that the bevels on the ends of them, the cuts on the ends are so much different. Look at this one, it's down around 45 degrees and this thing's way, way down maybe 20 degrees. So, you know, it's, uh, they're not the same and they're also not right straight across the frame. A midship's around seven, they're kind of 90 degrees across, but you can see at the ends that this has got quite a slant on the cut right here, but it fits perfectly. They're precision cut and plane to fit in place, and that's the end of that. I won't have to play with those anymore. Using an awl, I'm poking holes in the forward and after end grain of the slots that I cut in the bottom right here. The grain is nice and soft, so I'm able to just push it in there without using the hammer at all. It's real simple and fast to do. Now I'm going to take some of the frames over to the bench and I'm going to bang holes in the frames exactly opposite of these holes. But I have to use a hammer to do this because the framing is pretty firm and pushing it by hand, I wouldn't get a hole like I did in the cedar. So I take a hammer and I bang a series of holes in the end of the frame on each side. And what I'm really out to do here is when I glue it together, I'm trying to use the glue to create a mechanical connection between the plastic and the wood. We're using Total Boat 5 to 1 epoxy resin with the slow hardener here. Now that I've got all the bottom end of my framing cut off and planed right down, beveled right off exactly the way I want it, I'm ready to start framing it. There is a few other things I'd like to show you before I start off, and that is that I've put some stringers on the boat to tame the frames from the inside, and uh, I've got one at the shear, one at the turn of the bilge right here, and one down a little bit lower. This one's a little bit lighter, but because it's not doing quite as much duty. I'll take those off as I start planking the boat, but right now they're going to tame the frames as I put the frames in. 
Now you saw me put those little tiny divots in the end grain of the bottom right in the slots that the frames go in on the fore and aft face and I've also matched that up with little divots in the very end of the frames right here. Now those things should line up with each other, at least most of them or at least some of them, which is exactly what I'm trying to do because I'm just trying to create a little bit of friction in between there, especially for my building process. I don't want them just moving around just freely in there because this stuff is very slippery. You don't really glue to it. So I've created like a little connection right there. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is pre-bend it like so and just make it so that it cooperates with me when I'm putting it in there. Now it's not awfully hard to do, but I think it's important to get that done first. And then I'm gonna set it down, and I'm gonna take my little brush and my glue, and I'm gonna spread some glue. I'm using an acid brush for this because what I do with it is I cut the bristles off about half the length and it makes them way stiffer so when the glue is thick like this it's kind of cool in here. You can move the glue around a whole lot easier. I'm making sure that I fill those holes that I poked in there. It's kind of like a little reservoir of glue so I'll go over it two or three times just to make sure they're filled and then I'm going to spread some glue on the end of the frame and fill those holes that I poked in the end of the frame and then just take it right over and snap it right into place. Then I'm going to apply a couple of spring clamps just to hold it in position on a temporary basis. And then I'm going to pick up a wedge and drive it in and force that frame over to the side of the slot that I did not open up. Now that holds it right in its right spot so that the glue can dry and it'll be in the right position. We're on to our next frame here, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Spread the glue in the slot on both sides, make sure I don't have too much in there. I'll spread a little bit on the end of the frame, and slide it right down in position now. You know, if you were sliding these into position yourself, you'd be able to appreciate how tight that fit really is. So the glue is going to dry between the two, in between all those holes, and it's going to make that mechanical connection like I was talking about. It's a bent frame dory rather than a sawn frame dory, and that's kind of odd in itself, but I think it's got some advantages, so I can't wait to keep going. As we're getting the frames put in place here now, you can see the lines of the boat start popping right out. You know, the stringers that I put on are on some of the planking lines, so that's the longitudinal shape of the boat. And the frame is not in exactly the right position, but it really shows you how the boat's going to look. And it's got kind of an odd look there between the plastic and the wood that's going to stick with this boat for a long, long time because we're not going to paint over the plastic. And, uh, you know, I think it looks fantastic. I'm just cleaning up around the heel end of the frames here with some alcohol. I'm not using very much. It doesn't soak all the way through the rag I'm using even, so uh, it's pretty safe. It looks fantastic. Look how clean and neat it looks. It's going to look neater than that even after the glue dries. I'll plane it just a little bit more and clean it up really nice now. I think it looks pretty. I'm sure it's the way to go. I can't wait to get the boat done and put it to the real test.